Most of us heard about Devil's Tower, and some of us believe it used to be a tree. Well, look at it. It's a strange looking mountain. I for one believe it used to be a tree, but how can anyone fathom a tree being so huge? Maybe it's because most of us believe there couldn't be nothing greater than us humans. We are at the peak of evolution. Some of us refuse to believe we could be so small. Take a look at this boulder. Stare at it for a second. How many of you think that boulder looks like a seed? If you go back to the video about the giants where I was saying that that boulder that was split looks like a mushroom, let me show you where I got that idea. This is a mushroom. And these are mushrooms. Now these right here, I'm not sure if they're mushrooms or not, but I'm pretty sure that there's some sort of vegetation. I'm still going with mushrooms. So if mushrooms can come in this size, it's safe to say that trees may have come in larger size as well. I hear the stories of the mother tree that reaches into space and somehow was destroyed, but what if it was more than just that one tree? We are about to go on a fantasy ride, but in order for it to be a fantasy, I would need your help. I would need you to get out of small thinking. During this whole video, I would need you to watch it as if you are a giant. Look at the images as if every step you take is several miles compared to the puny humans below. No one can hurt you except other giants. Now remember, you are a giant. Wouldn't this look like a tree stump to you? How about this? Oh yes, it was more than one. There was a forest of them. Now you and I are giants and we come back to this planet 1,000 years after we cut their giant trees. The tiny humans even created cities on some of these stumps totally unaware that they are just mites on a stump in someone's backyard. The trees on this stump is like the giant's equivalent to moss, right? Remember, this is a fantasy. I don't think this is what happened, just ride with me. We decided to take a stroll around the planet for old times sake and look at what used to be trees. Can you see the trees? This is me speaking. For people that believe in this, which includes me, you ever wonder what happened to all that wood? Unless they're all in the ocean or burnt, and that's a lot of burning. But wouldn't they leave some evidence behind? Indeed they did. This is a petrified redwood tree stump. Study it for a second, you'll see why in a minute. These are the trees that were left behind. Now this is where coincidence comes in and things start taking a weird turn because it happens with me all the time. Look at this tree. Now I'm not saying this is what happened, but look at it. Don't it look like it has slash marks from an ax? I mean huge slash mark. It, it, actually it seems like they, they started with an ax and finished with something else. But doesn't it look like a tree stump that was, a, that was mutilated by an ax? I mean look at the slash marks in it. So I'm looking at this thinking, if they had axes to cut these giant trees, that they would need some type of metal. Where would they get the material to make the metal for the axe? So I'm assuming they had to dig a quarry, and the biggest quarry I know, I'm assuming it's a quarry after hearing stories, is from the Grand Canyon. Take a look at this Google map. Now we're gonna go to Google map and look up the Grand Canyon. When you change your map to the terrain, it gives you the details of the depths and all that stuff. You look at the uh, look at the Grand Canyon with the terrain map. Doesn't it look choppy, like it's been chopped up? They're trying to say that the water did this and erosion, but why in this area only? This this river goes for thousands of miles, and it's only this area. But 
look at the detail. Look how it looks chopped up. It doesn't look, it, it looks too jagged. But if you look at all the other streams past, uh, before the Grand Canyon, after it, it starts smoothing out. It was this area right here. They chopped up. And then you, and you could see why they was chopping up the trees. Not knowing this whole time this tree is actually in the Grand Canyon. How crazy is that? I'm looking at this tree. I'm thinking the Grand Canyon. And it is in the Grand Canyon. Yo, the Grand Canyon was a forest of giant trees. Now look at this, all this chewing around the Grand Canyon. And this was after the trees was cut and petrified. Now we seeing why they find evidence of Egyptian artifacts in the Grand Canyon. They was digging in there, or I'm assuming that they was the one digging in there, but what were they digging for? Look at this, look, look, at, look at all of this. All that chewing, 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 chewing. If you look at it from a distance, like you looking at it in a microscope, you can see that it looks like it's been chiseled. Like a small, somebody got a giant chisel and just was chiseling pieces. Now when you start looking at images of the Grand Canyon, you, you will see stumps, massive amount of stumps. It, I don't know, maybe I'm reaching a little bit. Maybe it wasn't a forest. Maybe it was just one tree with a massive root system. All this chewing is not the whole Grand Canyon, just some parts of it. What was they chewing for? What did they use? Metal or lasers? Lasers should be easy. I just look for holes in the Grand Canyon. Maybe they made a mistake somewhere. So I look up holes in the Grand Canyon and this is where things get weird. This is what pops up when I look up the holes. Sam Fan Bach or Sam Pan Bach, also known as the Grand Canyon of Thailand. Look at this, this is amazing. Look at all these holes. And this, this is the story they want us to believe. They said that the rushing waters created these holes look how fast they come up with a story i mean you will believe it too if you don't look at it and start paying attention to things i want you to look at this look at this real close these are melt marks look at it these rocks melted something they use some kind of form of high powered laser that melted these rocks look at all these these are melting evidence look at the edges so now while this had my curiosity i'm looking up things that melted and wouldn't you know it, by coincidence, it led me right back to the Arizona area. This is New Mexico. But that's not all that appears to be melted. Let's go back to the Grand Canyon Google map again. This vein right here, doesn't it look fresh compared to everything else? Like it's, it's newer, like they started on this later. And... I would say that they did because they rerouted a river, a stream, to make a river that connects to the Colorado River. I don't know why, to give it more strength, I don't know, but they maybe they was digging something over there and they needed a water supply. But I'm gonna show you in a minute how they rerouted a stream. First we go to the 50 foot fall. Look at this, look at this, um, look at this fall. It appears they created this fall. See, look at all this stuff right here that's melting. That's not mud. You can see that it looks like it's melted or really pushed down and just frozen time. That's just, that's one fall. Now we follow the assumed artificially created creek to Little Navajo Falls. Look at it. Looks like mud, doesn't it? Looks like it's been melted, right? Look at it. Let's continue our journey down this creek to Havasu Falls. I really like this one. Look at this one right here. It looks like the whole wall was melted. Actually, it looked like they used one giant cannon, laser cannon, and shot with a creek pouring out the water and the heat just melted everything on the side. That's what it looks like to me. I don't know, it still looks like mud, but that's not mud. Look at it, look at this, this is amazing. It looked like something shot a cannon of intense heat and melted the wall. Right where that hole is at is where the water coming out. And they just created a fall to move this creek. They needed the water. It's a pretty blue water too. Let's continue our tour down Havasu Creek to Mooney's Falls. Interesting. All these falls have the same pattern. Does it look melted to you yet? We're not finished yet. Next stop, Beaver Falls. Mm-hmm, same signature. Melted walls. 
Somebody or something did a lot of work on this creek, which eventually ended at the Colorado River. But there's a lot of strange thing going on with this in this Arizona area, especially with the Grand Canyon. You got media crater that landed in that area and all this melted stuff in New Mexico. It's, it's a lot of strange stuff. And when you look at Google map and you try to look at certain areas, they blur. You know how they try to hide stuff. They blur a lot of things in the Grand Canyon area. And just as you hit that whoa moment, things get even weirder. Well, here's the two theories I come up with why they cut the trees down. There's more theories, but this is the two that keeps coming up with me. They cut the trees down because the giants may have had spacecraft that was so large that they couldn't land on the planet. So they used the trees to climb up and down to get into their spaceship. And somehow somebody was helping the humans on the earth by cutting these trees down to stop the giants from coming down to earth. And the giants that was left behind that couldn't get back to the ship died here because those trees may have been bearing fruits what the giants could eat. And it also being that tall and that many trees, the atmosphere was much larger, the oxygen was higher. So if they cut down the trees, the giants was eventually slowly suffocating like they're trying to do us now by burning down the forest. And they didn't have nothing to eat, which is why they started eating the humans, eating each other and possibly eating the dinosaurs. Another theory, the pesky humans kept climbing the trees, jumping into the ships, fucking up shit. So the giants chopped it down to keep humans from climbing up, which is why we had the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. The common theme of Jack and the Beanstalk, besides the giant trees, is that the giants lived in the sky. They may have been living in the trees. The trees were so large, they could probably build tree houses or they was in a ship. Either way, who told Jack to go up there and start fucking with the giants? The giants got tired of this shit and cut the trees down to keep the humans from getting up there. That's one theory. That, I mean, that's another theory. Or my final theory, something came down, chopped these trees down so they could terraform the planet and change the planet's frequency. Either way, giants were still in the picture. But the burning question I still have is, where is all that wood? I'd like to thank everyone who still continue to support the channel. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you. And I'd like to give a special shout out to Montavious, Eldana Hawkins. I'm really hoping I'm saying your name right. And Brian Good. Brian, are we related? My biological father's last name is Good. Thank you so much for the gifts. I wish I could reply personally, but the app only allows me to reply in emojis. Unless I'm doing something wrong, I can't figure it out. But thank you so much because it shows me that you appreciate the time that I put into these videos and all my Patreons. Thank you all. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys. And to everyone else to get the full unedited version of this video where I go into more details, join me on Patreon where you have access to all original videos plus extras. Thank you for watching and thank you for sharing your time with me.